Good, happy Saturday morning, April 18, 2020. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Saturday morning edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Saturday morning, so let's begin. First up, we're going to take a look at your coronavirus disease, COVID-19 in New Hampshire, what you need to know. Let's take a look at that information. And here is a look at that COVID-19 in New Hampshire information, what you need to know. There are 1,287 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. There are 684,920 number of people in the United States who have tested positive. 37 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 190 number of people who have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 34,614 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. This map of New Hampshire shows you where the cases of COVID-19 are in the towns and cities of New Hampshire. In Nashua, 117 cases are in Nashua. In this graph here, are new cases each day in New Hampshire in the purple daily new positive COVID-19 cases in the orange new hospitalizations and in the red are the deaths. And your common symptoms, fever, cough, and difficult breathing, how it spreads, and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. 36 new COVID-19 cases identified at Easter Seals Residential Facility, health officials say. Many cases in new outbreak asymptomatic, officials say. Let's take a listen to that video from WR News 9. Is your chimney protected? Every chimney should have a full coverage cap that covers the entire top of the chimney. The Easter Seals Gammon Academy in Manchester cares for children and teens who have developmental disorders. It recently began testing for COVID-19 at the state's recommendation, finding that 36 people have the virus. These children are asymptomatic. There are no symptoms. So it wasn't until testing was done for both staff and clients that we determined that they were positive. Of the 36 cases, COO Nancy Rollins says about 19 live there. That's about 25% of its residents. They are all, in essence, in isolation and quarantine. Um, if symptoms uh, increase, then we may rearrange some of our students. The other 17 cases are staff members. Easter Seals is now testing all of its employees. As soon as we receive reports, of symptomatic uh, residents or staff, um, our first action now is to go in and get everybody tested. Easter Seals is now stopping visitations, instead allowing parents and caregivers to connect with their kids online. Rollins says staff have the proper personal protective equipment. We have continued to take all of the necessary precautions that we have from the beginning, with aggressive hand washing, with aggressive uh, desanitizing, Easter Seals is praising its workers, saying there likely will be other coronavirus cases, but that they will never stop giving children the care that they need. Reporting live in Manchester, Mike Cronin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Homeless residents, shelter staff in Manchester tested for COVID-19.
state-run facility in Laconia set up for homeless people diagnosed with the virus. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9. Beltate's building supply has been classified an essential business, and we take this responsibility very seriously. Now you have the option to place your orders via phone or email to orders at beltates.com for free delivery or curbside pickup. Stay safe because you matter to us. One by one, some members of Manchester's homeless population entered this tent to be tested for COVID-19. Because it's a congregate living setting, we are testing every participant as well as all of our staff who have had any contact within the facility. The Manchester Fire Department and Catholic Medical Center conducted the testing even on those who don't have any symptoms. For our population, this is, this is just another huge layer of stress and they're already very physically vulnerable. Um, and so anxieties are high. The governor says about a dozen homeless people in the Queen City have already tested positive in the last few weeks. Anyone who gets a positive result during this testing will be isolated in a state-run facility in Laconia. That was supposed to be up and running right now, but the opening was pushed back until Monday. We would be looking to the state to operationalize their plans um, for isolation and quarantine, and the state have been working on their plans. After that, the shelter plans to open a temporary shelter at the former St. Casimir School on Union Street to help spread people out. It's very, very difficult, right? This is a, a very vulnerable population, um, a lot of high medical needs, and obviously when you're homeless, it's very, very difficult to practice good hygiene. Personal protective equipment has also been distributed to try and help slow the spread. That part's been really important because the more we can help everybody have the tools for social distancing and safety, the more we're going to be able to prevent the spread in general. Shelter staff tell us they do have enough people to run this new facility and they are eager to open it. The results from today's testing will be in on Monday. Reporting in Manchester, Kristen Carosa, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire educators develop plans for remote learning through rest of the year. New challenges faced as buildings closed because of COVID-19. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Chapel Tractor has been in our family since 1955, when great-grandfather Pearlie and grandfather George decided... New Hampshire schools had to quickly adapt when the decision to switch to remote learning came down in March, trying to get ahead of issues like food insecurity and making sure students have computers and internet access. Now that they won't be going back this school year, a new round of challenges, from how to return belongings left there to if and how to have graduations and proms. We've got some kids that are going to miss some rites of passage unless we figure something out. School leaders point to a mix of logistical issues and emotional tolls, including on families working from home while managing the learning of their children. Well, I get concerned about the stress on the family that that might cause. Um, and related to that is a lot of my teachers are in the same position. I think that teachers and, and uh, our faculty and staff members are all social uh, beings. We're used to being around hundreds of students per day. So to be isolated in their homes has been very, very difficult. If you were to ask me what's the biggest challenge going forward, it's, in a word, stamina. They say even the best efforts can't make up for the richness of the classroom. Addressing learning loss, difficult without knowing when it will end. Thinking about what do we need to plan for into the summer and what do we need to plan for in the startup of school next year. What is also consistent among administrators, though, is their praise for how well families and students and staff have stepped up to these challenges. They're all working on their calendars right now. Most will be done by early June. We're live in Portsmouth, Jennifer Crompton, WMUR News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. CMC workers saluted 
for work in fight against COVID-19. First responders, others gather outside hospital to show support. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Beltate's building supply has been classified an essential business, and we take this responsibility very seriously. Now you have the option to place your orders via phone or email to orders at beltates.com for free delivery or curbside pickup. Stay safe because you matter to us. It only took a few minutes, but it meant the world to the staff, nurses, and doctors at Catholic Medical Center. At shift change Friday afternoon, police, fire, and ambulance crews from four communities Stop traffic on McGregor Street to salute these workers fighting COVID-19. I have a young daughter and, you know, it means a lot to me when she says, Mom, you know, it's important for you to help people. And so, you know, the other people see that as, as nice. And, the you know, the first other first responders that are here, they're, they're dealing with this as much as we are. So we appreciate everything they do as well. There were signs and flags, even a bucket truck to give a wave to those still working on the upper floors. And there were more than just first responders here to say thank you. There were men, women, little kids, families, everybody giving a show of support. You know, unfortunately, with a lot of things we're seeing, it's it's the worst of times that bring a community together. You know, I, I think we first responders, we take a lot of services in the city for granted ourselves. And as you know, some people probably do us. These are people that live in our city, are members of our community, and are doing so much, again, to help residents and people throughout the state who are dealing with the effects of COVID-19. A similar show of support is scheduled for later on Friday evening at the Elliott Hospital. In Manchester, Andy Hershberger, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Great story there. And an update to a story that we told you about yesterday in our broadcast. Officials identify man killed in Manchester shooting. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Bar Harbor Bank and Trust understands life in northern New England. We think differently about banking relationships. And we Manchester man, show he died of a gunshot wound to the chest. 59-year-old Alan Bellavo was found dead following a shooting at his home on Brockton Street in the city last night. The coroner ruled the death a homicide. Manchester police say that it has identified all the parties involved, but no arrests have yet been announced. Okay, and there you go on that video and... That report. Walmart to require workers to wear face masks. Encourage shoppers to also do so. Retail giant Walmart will require employees to wear face masks starting Monday. It increases efforts the nation's largest private employer has done in the coronavirus pandemic. The company is also encouraging shoppers to also wear face masks. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention recommends wearing a cloth covering in public settings where other social distance measures are difficult to maintain, such as grocery stores and pharmacies. We have involved our policy on face coverings for optional to mandatory, as public health guidance has shifted, Walmart's president and CEO said in a statement. The company said workers can wear their own mask if it meets certain requirements or will have one provided. The employee requirement pertains to stores, clubs, 
distribution and fulfillment centers and its corporate offices. Walmart has been working and talking with workers' temperatures before shifts as part of the health screening. It also announced Friday it was extending its emergency leave policy through the end of May. And that is it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the right. <coughs> Sorry about that. My allergies are bugging me. Sorry about that, everyone. That is it for our morning broadcast, right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today with another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.